So today, uh, in our next talk, we're going to look at the issue of augmented reality. And I think most of you have had some experiences with augmented reality. Companies seem to be starting to push in this direction. But what was surprising to the editors of the, um, the journal of marketing that did the new technologies and marketing special issue was that to, to find that, in fact, there's very little systematic research on this topic. And that's what um, our next authors will try to remedy with their paper. Uh, we're joined by YC Tan from the City University of Hong Kong and Srinivas Reddy, uh, Srini from Singapore Management University. And they're gonna share some of their research that they've done examining the use of AR um, to, in particular, to, to facilitate product evaluation and to look at how that might affect sales in a, in a retailing setting. So welcome YC and, and Shruti, we, we look forward to your talk. Thank you so much, uh, Christine. Yeah. Um, uh, let me just start off uh, just introducing the topic. I, I think this has been an exciting journey for as well. So we've been working with companies which started using AR. And one of the questions I think Christine mentioned is they're not sure in terms of how, um, how it's actually, whether it's effective or not in their businesses. So, and, and uh, with the collaboration with this uh, luxury retailer, we're able to gather data of uh, uh, tens of thousands of customers who are interacted with a mobile app. And then we're able to actually decipher uh, the uh, exposure that they got, uh, the experience uh, that they actually had with the AR, and ultimately what the purchase choices that they made. And so this is the outcome of that. And, and one of the other elements that we see is increasingly there are lots of researchers who are doing the uh, work on AR, but much of it is in the lab. And I think the distinction in terms of what we were able to do here is with actual data of customers interacting with an AR application and be able to track from the beginning till their purchase. So effectively, I think that sort of gave, gives uh, a, 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 a good amount of uh, evidence in terms of how engaging the AR applications are for customers and also how they were able to convert it. So there's some surprising results that I think YC will share uh, in a minute, yeah. Next slide, please, yeah. So I'll, I'll just briefly give an introduction. This is These are elements which I think we all understand that uh, AR does, and one of the first things is it, it entertains. And, and we do understand the entertainment part, uh, but the others are less understood. So there are elements that AR can actually educate the consumers, and then also help customers evaluate the products that they're actually interacting with. And finally, the post-purchase uh, experience can actually be enhanced by uh, doing that. So YC will take you through the journey in terms of with, with examples of firms that are doing it and uh, we'll share the results with you in terms of what, what the impact of that was on, 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 uh, on customers. YC, take away. Thank you, Professor Srini. So uh, I'll, I'll give you some brief examples of how AI has been used uh, by some brands to give you some ideas of how you can apply it to your business as well. So for the first application of AI is to entertain customers. So this one is quite straightforward. The idea is to use uh, to, to use AR experiences as a way to build interest in the brand and to create uh, novel experiences to engage customers. And some retailers have also used uh, AR to drive foot traffic to their uh, physical stores. So for example, like Walmart, they collaborated with Marvel and DC Comics to introduce some superhero themed uh, AR experiences uh, and they uh, they basically place uh, different displays at different parts of the stores. So customers have to go around the store uh, to, uh, and when they, when they scan their phone at these displays, they can unlock some special AR effects. And uh, Starbucks have also, have also used AR in the same way to sort of like engage customers within the store in their uh, roastery in Shanghai. So the second application of AR is a bit more practical. So it is to educate customers. And uh, the idea is that AR is a very immersive and uh, interactive medium. So it is a very effective way to deliver information to customers uh, and to help customers understand complex mechanisms uh, in, a, in a more straightforward way. So to give you an example, uh, for Toyota, in the first uh, on the left left hand side, uh, when they introduced their hybrid uh, car models, 
So a lot of consumers were still not familiar with the technology. So what they did was they used AR to demonstrate the inner mechanisms of how the hybrid model works to help customers appreciate this uh, innovate the innovation behind this uh, new technology. Uh, the other example of how you know AR has been used to educate customers is to help them navigate uh, within the store. So for Lowe's, uh, they have an in-store navigation app, which uh, as you can see from this picture here, it, uh, it overlays some directional signs in front of customers to help them find the product that they want in the store. And uh, I just read the news a few days ago, uh, actually Marks and Spencer, uh, just a, three or four days ago, they, they introduced this uh, same in-store navigation app, which is uh, AR enabled. Uh, in their stores in the UK. So I think there's a lot of opportunities in this area to use uh, AR. So the third uh, application for AR is to enhance the post-purchase experience. So just now, you know, when we talk about entertaining customers and educating them, uh, it is at the sort of at the earlier stages of the customer journey, but you can also use uh, AR to continue to engage customers after they have purchased the products. So there are two examples here that I have. One is from Lego. So they specially designed this uh, series of uh, brick sets. Uh, so after the kids build the Lego sets, they can use a special app and uh, they can find virtual characters that are hidden you know, uh, within this uh, uh, Lego sets. So that's a new way to play with Lego bricks. Uh, the other example here is from Hyundai. Uh, in this case, they have a special virtual guide, which is supported by AR, which uh, teaches their customers how to perform basic maintenance functions after they purchase their car. So again, this, these are just some ideas about how AR has been used uh, by these brands. So the last application that uh, we looked at is how uh, AR can help customers to evaluate products. So, uh, AR is a very useful way to help customers to visualize how products will appear when they are actually being used. Uh, and this can help to increase customers' confidence in their purchase decisions. So I think uh, you probably have came across some of these examples. A lot of brands are, are uh, using AR in this way. Uh, I think the more prominent examples is IKEA's Place app. So IKEA's uh, Place app shows you how IKEA furniture will look like in your house. So it help you helps you to imagine, uh, you know, whether or not the furniture would match the interior uh, decor in your house. Uh, Sephora also use uh, AR in a similar way. So they have this uh, virtual artist feature on their mobile app. So when customers look at the, you uh, use this AR feature, they can see themselves uh, trying on different colors of uh, skincare, uh, different colors of cosmetic products. So this is the, um, this, this uh, application of retail is what we are focusing on in our paper, basically uh, how AR has been used to help customers to evaluate products. And uh, as you know, as Prof Srini mentioned just now, uh, when we started out on this research, uh, the technology itself was relatively new. So there were a lot of businesses that were excited about the technology, but at the same time, there were some doubts about, you know, does AR really, can, can AR really help us to increase, you know, revenue for, uh, for our business? Can it help to increase sales? So there's a quote here from a CNN article, uh, virtual lipsticks and smoky eyeshadows are popular, but are they translating into more makeup sales? And uh, this is the research question that we were trying to answer, uh, whether or not AR can help to increase sales in online retail. So we collaborated with an uh, uh, international cosmetics retailer, uh, and this retailer is quite well known. Uh, they have both online and offline presence. So this retailer introduced a AR try-on feature for some product categories on their mobile app. And I have a short video here to demonstrate how the feature works. So you can see in the screen, the lady is trying on different colors of lipstick. So the color of a lip changes based on the lipstick uh, that she chose. And over here, she's uh, trying on eyelashes. 
So you can see that, uh, you know, the eyelashes is being superimposed onto her face. So this is sort of uh, how very similar to the Snapchat's AR uh, function. So the retailer shared a very comprehensive data set with us, uh, browsing history for more than 100,000 customers for over 2,000 products. Uh, and, and each color of the lipstick we considered as one product. So that's why we have so many products. So uh, based on this data set, we were able to come up with some interesting findings uh, to share with you. So the first, uh, the main question that we wanted to answer was whether or not AR helped to increase category sales. And what we did was to compare product categories that uh, have this AR feature with product categories that do not have the AR feature. And at the same time, uh, this feature is only available on the mobile app. So we also compared uh, the sales on the mobile app with the sales on the web online website. And after controlling for channel trend, category trend, external events, uh, we find that there is still a positive impact of uh, AR of the availability of the AR feature. That means after the AR feature became available, sales for these product categories that have the feature on the mobile app uh, went up. So this suggests that uh, yes, AR can actually help online retailers to increase category sales. So our next question was, okay, so where is this uh, sales coming from? And more specifically, uh, who are customers who are more likely to buy after using this uh, AR feature? And from our research, uh, we have identified two groups of customers. The first are the customers who are new to the online channel. So these are the customers that uh, purchase offline, uh, purchase from the retailers offline stores before, and they are used to, you know, holding the, uh, seeing the actual product before they buy, and maybe even using the product testers in the stores. Uh, and they may not be very comfortable buying online because they are not able to try the products. But, you know, with this AR technology, now they are able to virtually try on the products. And in, uh, that encourages them to uh, make the purchase. And what this means for retailers is that AR can help to uh, promote the adoption of online channels. The second group of customers that are more likely to buy are the uh, customers who are new to the product category. So uh, AR is a low cost and low effort uh, way for customers to try and explore products from new categories. And some of these customers, after trying on the product uh, with the AR feature, they find that actually, you know, uh, the, they like the, the way they look with the product and then they end up buying uh, the products. Uh, so for retailers, this means that it, AR can uh, help to bring in new customers and to expand the category. So our third question is, uh, so which products are more likely to benefit from this uh, AR feature? And we find that there are three types of product that, uh, that benefits more. The first is products from brands that are less popular. So when customers usually buy products online, uh, because they are not able to see the actual product, they tend to rely on certain cues. For example, you know, the brand name. But when they are able to uh, virtually try the products using AR, they sort of uh, focus they sort of focus more on how well the products fit them rather than which brand the product is from. And, you know, because of that, the smaller brands or the less popular brands tend to benefit more. Uh, so um, that's the first type of product that, that will benefit from AR. The second type of product that benefit is the products that are less mainstream. So this is different from brand popularity uh, within one brand. Usually there are some products that are more mainstream or uh, more, uh, more common, and there are some products that are less mainstream. So to give an example, uh, for MAC Cosmetics, it's a rel relatively well-known brand for cosmetic products, and they have uh, many different colors of lipsticks. So you have the red color and the pink color, and these are the colors that are very common, very mainstream, but you also have blue color lipstick and green color lipstick, uh, which are less mainstream. And uh, usually these products carry more risk for the customers because they are not commonly purchased. They are not as commonly purchased. 
and customers do not know how they look like in this, you know, wearing these products. But when they're able to try the products using AR, uh, it helps to make them feel more comfortable to, you know, to buy these uh, products that are less mainstream. So these two findings suggest that AR can help to level the playing field for brands or products that are less popular. So the third type of product that can benefit uh, from our research are the ones that are more expensive. So I think this is uh, quite intuitive. So when customers are spending more money to buy products, they want to make sure that the product fits them well, because otherwise the money is wasted. So what this means for retailers is that AR can help to uh, increase sales for products with higher margins and help them bring in more revenue. So to, uh, to just quickly summarize, what we find from our study is that AR can help retailers to increase category sales. And this sales is mostly coming from customers who are new to the online channel or new to the product category. And uh, brands that are less popular, products that are less mainstream, and products that are more expensive are the ones that tend to benefit more from this uh, AR feature. And these findings uh, taken together, they consistently uh, suggest that AR is most effective when customers experience some form of risk or uncertainty in the purchase process. So for example, when they are buying online for the first time, or when they are buying from a category or a brand that they are not familiar with, or if they are buying a product that is more pricey. So these are situations when uh, AR can help customers feel more comfortable uh, with their purchase decision. Okay, so I think uh, that's the last slide that I have. Thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, listening to our presentation and Prof Professor Srini and myself can answer any questions that you have for us. Thank you, YC. Thank you, Srini. Uh, super interesting. Uh, so many applications for marketers. Uh, I'm just thinking about a lot of opportunities um, and the, our audience is also asking a lot of questions. So let's go ahead and, and, and let me bring those over here so I can see them real clearly and, and, and you can see them as well. Um, if, if anyone wants to ask a question, you can go ahead and put that into the Q&A tab. Um, and let me just mention that uh, we are pasting into the chat um, a link to a managerial to a marketing uh, manager version of this paper for both papers um, and to the original paper. If you want all of it, or if you just want that shortened version, um, those will be pasted into the chat and you can click through and look at those materials on your own. But let's go ahead and get into the, the Q&A. So Nestor is asking a couple of questions about attribution that I think you guys can see, which is how is AR, uh, the AR's application uh, in terms of its ROI measured? Um, other than the number of users? And then what about um, the attribution to the app itself? Um, have you had any experience working with companies or have any thoughts that you can share on that question, those questions? Yeah, thank you, Christian. Thank you, Nestor. I, I'll start off uh, uh, answering uh, briefly and then I'll, I'll, I'll let YC sort of uh, chime in as well. Uh, the two questions are a little bit related, Nestor. One is, how is uh, uh, ROI measured? Um, and, and typically, I think this is quite early when we talk to the companies, they're, they're, they were not so curious about ROI because they were so excited about the technology and how the products that they're actually sort of marketing essentially can be, at least the experience of it could be enhanced. So these are soft measures they were, do, uh, they were actually doing. And our research actually confirmed that, that the engagement of uh, customers with the AR app uh, either on on the app uh, on a mobile device or they have implemented in an in store app as well. The engagement is is huge in terms of the amount of time that they spend on these things. So they that's a soft measure. It doesn't actually really relate to the return. Uh, and and so I think as we sort of mature in using these technologies, those questions will be asked. And so one of the other things, other than just the users, is the number of obviously amount of time that they spend with the application and, and what is the translation in terms of purchase behavior? Uh, do they just engage them for, for a period of time and then they just go away or does, does it translate into actually them making a purchase? So with the company that we're working uh, with on this uh, uh, project, they actually had 
uh, uh, customers who are, uh, who are enrolled um, in, a, in a loyalty program so they can actually track whether they bought it online after the app usage or they actually went and purchased it in the store. So anyway, so they're able to track those uh, uh, and, and, and again, uh, the converting it into ROI measure is again, it, it's, it's very early stages, but it's possible as we mature, we should be able to actually tie that uh, together. The, the second uh, question, Nestor, is on attribution uh, of purchase, and I think the, for us, I think the uh, the design of the of the of the uh, app and the design in terms of how um, how we can monitor people coming in once the app is introduced. The app has, for example, we had um, a couple of products. One is a lipstick, and the other is eyeshadow. Um, so you, they they did not exist, and so we can. There's a, a quasi almost an experimental approach to it. And what the customers that were doing prior to this, what were they purchasing and where they, where they were purchasing mostly either online or on, on the app or on, 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 in, in store. And so once the, uh, uh, the app was developed where uh, these hundreds of lipstick brands and shades essentially were introduced, then we followed this, these customers to see have they switched? Have they bought more? Have they bought differently? And so on and so forth. So, I mean, I, it, it may be a weak link, but there is some attribution element that we were able to track and, 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 uh, and uh, sort of uh, uh, present in, in, the, in the paper. Uh, YC, uh, is, uh, uh, yeah. please add any, any of your thoughts on this one as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so just to add, uh, maybe to the first question, I, I guess the ROI, how you measure it, depends a lot on the function of the AR, so like the four uh, functions that we mentioned earlier. So if the function is to entertain customers, then maybe you want to look at engagement, uh, duration, how many people downloaded the app and how many people use the app or use the AR feature on social media platforms. Uh, if, the, if, the, uh, if the function or the, the purpose of the app is to help customers evaluate products, then you can look at sales as the way we have done in the research. If the purpose of the app is to educate customers, you can also think of other type of ROI. So one of the uh, examples, one of the articles that I was reading for Lowe's, when they introduced the in-store navigation app, uh, what they said was that it helped to reduce the time that their customer service staff need to help, need to guide customers uh, to, to find the products and the customer service staff can spend their time you know, doing other duties. So this could be another way of measuring ROI. Uh, for, for, for the app. So I guess it depends on the purpose of the, the app, uh, ultimately, uh, to, to think about how you want to measure the ROI. Uh, and for the second question, uh, so to add on to what Prof, Prof Srini mentioned, uh, we, we did actually have customer level data. So we know for each customer, uh, which products did they browse on the app, uh, whether or not they use the AR feature. So which products did they browse? And then for each product, did they use the AR feature or not? and then which products did they buy eventually. So we do have all these uh, data which we were able to uh, use in our analysis. So that was how we, we did the attribution, yeah. And let me just add, because it sounds like when, in working with the company, there was kind of a natural experiment where they, they brought a, AR into, these into some of the categories. And so I, I think for marketers to think about using experiments like this, if they're trying to learn, you know, about attribution, experiments are are, are are probably the best way to do it because then you have a baseline against which you can compare, and you have some categories, for example, that can serve as natural controls. As long as you randomly pick those categories, you don't want to pick your best category. You want to sort of randomly pick a category and then watch those consumers over time. I think that's that's really neat. Mm -hmm. um, this goes a little bit, the, the second question from, from Lakshay is about um, adoption of mm -hmm. AR by consumers in, in marketing. We know a lot about the adoption of technology, and this is a great situation, I think, where consumers do have to get comfortable with, with, with this technology. So what, what insights do you have, maybe from working with the company or from your own work on this topic about what might help consumers you know, make that adoption uh, more easily. I well, see so you want to take a crack at this? I, I have a couple <laughs> okay. of so, ideas. So based on uh, my, as in, sorry, where is the question? 
Oh, uh, it's at the top there. Yeah. Uh, so what what affects uh so how comfortable are customers in using AI tech? Uh, I think it depends a bit. Uh, this was part of the conversation that uh the interview that uh, Professor Srini had with the uh with the company that we're working with. So they did mention that one thing is the market. So different consumers, depending on which market the consumer is from, uh, they may feel more or less comfortable with AI. So for example, the example that he quoted was Australia. Australia is a market that is very comfortable with uh, AR. Uh, I think the other thing is also the age of your consumers. So I think the younger generations, the Gen Zs, they are more comfortable with uh, TikTok and Snapchat. And you know probably they use AR on a uh, weekly basis. So they are comfortable with this uh, AR technology. But for the older generation of consumers, perhaps they are still a bit uh, um, uncertain about how to use it uh, or they do they may not see the value of using uh, this technology uh, yet um, yeah so those are some of the factors that that uh, that I frequently see uh, when I when I when I've been researching in this area yeah very good thank you YC I, I just want to add on one little thing um, uh, uh, Christine if, uh, if you have a minute yeah, well, one of the things that we notice is uh, the paper that we uh, um, uh, 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 presenting is based on a uh, 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 mobile uh, AR app. But we also have worked with this company where they inst installed a, uh, uh, an AR uh, uh, booth inside the store. And, and so we had uh, very interesting observations uh, that we are a technology company from Norway actually sort of uh, monitoring the behavior of customers who actually sort of interact with this AR app. And so that, that actually has some interesting implications for us. What, what we found is when you have this, it, it's, a, it's a group um, effort where people come in, there are two women who come in and they're interacting not only with, with the a AR uh, thing, but also they're interacting with each other. We've seen families come in with young kids. So it, it becomes almost like, as we said, an entertainment uh, uh, function. So. Uh, what we see is this interaction uh, for the first time with, a, with an app uh, uh, in the store essentially gave us a lot of, uh, lot of insight in terms of how people interact with it, particularly as in a social event. Uh, it became a social event where each, each of these young women essentially are uh, communicating with each other, trying out different lipsticks um, um, uh, 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 on, on, on the AR app. And so uh, the amount of time that they spend, it becomes partly entertainment, partly the learning, and partly uh, ultimately uh, 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 culminating in, in, in choosing a particular product. So anyway, so I'm, I'm just uh, giving an example in terms of how adoption could occur, where people get comfortable maybe going to a store, which they're normally used to, and, and, and interacting with an AR device, and maybe later on they can actually do it on their mobile device. Excellent. I think that's helpful to companies who are in an off offline setting where they can make that introduction to yeah. people. Maybe just specifically, Laura asked, I I'm curious to get an answer to her question, just because food and beverage is a bit trickier, it seems. Yeah. So I think she's wondering about, do you have any, maybe in about a minute or so, just any suggestions for her? Yeah. Well, I see, I'll take this and I think, but this is the is a tough question. I think you should handle it later on, but I'll just give you a quick example. Yeah, it, it, it is difficult. I think uh, uh, as, as we know, AR is a very visual um, uh, uh, um, mode uh, that we can, we can interact with visually. And again, to give you a sense in terms of it, uh, for some product categories do well, like lipstick is easy because you can see the color uh, appearing on your lips in, in the image. Whereas if you want makeup, yeah, the resolution and, and the latency that occurs essentially makes it more tricky for customers to do it. So I, I would place the food and the beverage in the same category. Uh, maybe they cannot actually make a decision uh, based on taste because that, that, that particular technology has not come up yet. But the idea is you can make it entertaining. And, and we've seen there are uh, examples where restaurants are actually adopting AR technology um, while you're waiting for food, they essentially have literally an AR show going on and what the dishes that you're going to get uh, once you actually chose it on the menu. So there are other ways that you can actually do it. I, I'm, I'm a little hard pressed to think about how, it, uh, how the technology will work where you can actually have other senses involved. But at the moment, I think uh, in, in beverages and food, uh, there's a possibility for, uh, for people to experience uh, uh, in terms of 
as an entertaining sort of uh, element uh, uh, that, that can be incorporated. Okay, so, so maybe I can just uh, add, add on to what uh, Professor Srini has said and just give an example. So for example, like Starbucks, I think it's considered an F&B brand. Uh, they actually have some AR effect. Uh, when you point the phone on one of their cups, you will see some animation. Like for example, during Christmas or during Valentine's Day, there are special AR effects, you know, uh, to, for, for when you point the phone at, at the cup. Uh, the other example I can think of is Kellogg's. So Kellogg's, uh, I mean, you know, it's a cereal, cereal, cereal uh, brand and they usually have things on, on the box, right? So they, for, uh, for one of the box, they actually had some AI effects. So if you point your phone uh, at the box, then you can see some, I think it was educational. So the kids can learn some, uh, some new things through, through, AR, through the AR experience. Yeah, so I, I guess <laughs> uh, that's mainly how it has been used, yeah. And that's great. That's great. I think there's a lot of opportunity here. It's just a matter of sort of thinking through what would be interesting to your customers. So it's probably company and customer specific. So uh, YC and Srini, thank you so much. It's super interesting. I think very helpful to people. I really appreciate it. And let me just um, close by thanking all of our presenters uh, and also thanking Paige um, and the other uh, editors who were in charge of the special issue, Donna Hoffman, Stefan Stremerich, um, and Michelle Vadel. This is a list of all of the articles for people who haven't seen uh, the special issue. And all of these are on the Journal of Marketing website. So if you click through and either of the articles that uh, were posted there, and it'll take, you can ultimately uh, navigate back to the Journal of Marketing. Uh, there's a lot of, a, a wide range of things from avatars to genetics. Uh, to augmented reality. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wide open space in terms of technology. 